So a narcissistic parent will basically misuse the role of trust, the role of protector, the role of guidance that a parent will have toward a child. They will misuse this as a form of power and control over the child instead of nurturing and growing the child to be the best person that they are, to be the person that they actually are. So there are a lot of ways that narcissistic parents treat children. Some of the things a narcissistic parent might do are being controlling toward their children, being possessive of their children, guilt tripping their children, or enmeshing in their children's lives. So those are just a few of the things we're going to talk about here. Certain narcissists, certain narcissistic parents will have a need for excessive admiration, respect, attention, and all of it is at the child's expense. All of it diminishes and takes away from the child's own experience and forces that child to put their attention, focus, and all of it onto the narcissistic parent, right? It hinders the child's development and sense of self and their ability to individuate and be their own whole human being or feel like they are their own whole human being. Children of narcissistic parents become an extension of the narcissist in the narcissist view. They are treated as if they are a part of the narcissist and therefore responsible for the narcissistic parents feelings, reactions and all of it. It becomes an enmeshed relationship rather than two individuals who are in relationship together. They're, the narcissistic parent is always using the child for narcissistic supply. Parents who do this, parents who are narcissistic and are see the child as an extension of themselves tend to be the type that create golden children or that see their child as a golden child or that, that push a child to overachievement and then scapegoat them when they don't achieve. So they are teaching a form of perfectionism in that child and a form of overachieving as a means to knowing that child's worth and self-esteem all gets wrapped up around their achievements and their doing because it is what is reinforced by the toxic parent. Basically, the child is forced to achieve at all cost, meaning if there wasn't an achievement, there would be punishment or more than punishment, there would be disappointment. There would be a devaluing that happened within the the dynamic between the narcissistic parent and the child. And if you've lived with this, you know that the narcissistic parent lives vicariously through you. And not only that, but they'll take the praise and the recognition and the achievements that you did have, and they will turn it around and make it about themselves. Oh my gosh, little so-and-so, look how wonderful they did. You know, I made sure to get them here every day. You know, I made sure to get them to practice. You know, I make sure that they have the very best of everything they need to achieve what they're achieving. So it's not the child's achievement. It's because of the narcissistic parent that that child was able to achieve anything in the first place. They, they steal the glory. They steal the feeling of accomplishment. They steal the child's self-esteem by wrapping up that child's self-esteem around themselves. So they teach a sort of helplessness. They teach a sort of learned helplessness that that child, that person, as they grow up, needs to refer back to others to seek the validation that their achievements have any worth and any value. Otherwise, they don't have any worth or any value. It can be very, very hard on these uh, children when they become adults to find individuation without other people telling them how great they are, telling them. And you can see how golden child can either become very, very hard on oneself, very determined to prove oneself all the time that, that they have worth, right? And very hard on themselves and at the same time high achieving. Or if the person is has tendencies towards narcissism, you can see how it could lead to creating another narcissist in, in um, the way that it boosts a child up and then says, I need other people to look at me, to show me that what I just did was great. So it, it forces that child to seek attention from the outside for the achievements that they have that should be able to be met on the inside just by the sheer enjoyment of achieving something. All of this makes it very difficult for the child or impossible for the child to have its own identity, to individuate and become a healthy, I, I, a healthy adult with their own identity. This teaches success as love or else. So you succeed 
or else you don't get the the affection, the praise, the admiration. And the thing is, it's a never ending thing. It's never enough. They don't actually praise and say, good job. I'm really proud of you. They say, good job. I'm really proud of you. Look how, look what I did for you. Look what, look what you achieved because of me. You're just like me. You can do these things because you're just like me. I'm good at that too. I did that as a child and I'm good at it too. And therefore that's why you're good at it. Instead of just having the success or not success, being proud of the success or not success, and then loving the child separately from that, whether they have success or not, right? It all becomes about achievement equals validation for self, love, okay? And <clears throat> yeah, it leaves people feeling like they can never find love because it can never be met with, it can never be met with enough. It was never enough with the narcissist. It lacks boundaries when a parent parents this way when a narcissistic parent is like this with a child or an adult child <laughs> when a narcissistic parent is like this with you they are lacking the boundaries that it takes to create an individual to be able to differentiate yourself from them it's enmeshed another thing about enmeshment is they expect you to tell them every aspect of your life they are overly involved overly concerned with controlling of and manipulating of the life that you lead they need to know all your information you'll know that this is going on when you tell them something good and they find a way to make it bad when they take your glory your joys and everything in life that doesn't revolve around them and start beating it down so that you no longer know if you liked that thing in the first place or you start hiding things because you know if you tell them they will just destroy it or they disapprove of all your friends. They disapprove when you start dating. They disapprove of everything that doesn't revolve around them or their choices for your life. Another thing a narcissistic parent will do when they're this type of narcissistic parent is they will shower you with gifts on occasion when they choose. It's not something you can rely on or count on and not that you should be counting on gifts, but you know what I mean? It's they give a lot and then take a lot back. So they may give you extravagant gifts, but then when you're out, say you're still uh, financially, they say they're still financially helping you. They won't even help with the tiniest things because they say you're, you're taking from them or you're being greedy, do it on your own. Like this could be an, anyone, a, an adult to a teenager, you know, they, they won't give the normal things but then they will give extravagant gifts to prove love, to prove that they have value in your life. So let's move on to the guilt tripping narcissist. There are a lot of narcissistic parents who use guilt trip as a major manipulation tactic in their entire life, but mainly with their children. They have a captive audience with children. Children are wrapped up from a young age, of course, in their parents' world, that's normal what is not healthy and okay is when that world becomes a world of manipulation when that world that they that the child is living in is one where they are being guilt tripped and made to feel shame about themselves or about a situation in order to please and take care of and feed supply toward a narcissistic parent so some of the things that they might do when they're this type of narcissistic parent is they might use the child as a marital substitute a substitute spouse in a way that is like this emotional enmeshment sort of attachment that isn't healthy where they are burdening the child with tasks responsibilities emotional aspects that are not the child's place to be that would be more the place of a partner or a spouse or even a friend okay they might use the child at, at for counsel or for to dump the the woes of the day on or to talk about things that are overly personal to the adult in an adult way that isn't the child's business or to make the child do major decision making that a child shouldn't have to be making even for themselves in their life and 
they will a lot oftentimes do this under the guise of teaching the child to make choices teaching you know it's it can be really twisted and manipulative they will also make the children their sounding boards their counsel their therapist even right they'll turn the child into what looks like a therapist where they're telling all their problems to the child and the child has to sit there like an emotional dumpster listening to this toxic parent go on and on and on about their feelings about every situation they'll manipulate and gaslight the child so that that child if they walk away like look i don't want to hear this is told that they are not being sensitive, that they don't care about the parent. The parent will cry hysterically to force the child to sit and listen to the toxic words coming out of their mouth that have nothing to do with the reality of the relationship between the child and the parent. They have an unreasonable jealousy of other people in your life, of your friends, of the people you bring home that you're dating or that, that are your partners, and they will guilt trip you to make sure your attention goes more to them than it does to the person you're with. They will, they will say things like, oh, so you're going out again? If, if, even if you don't live with them, even if it's like they want you to stay on the phone with them for hours and hours, or, you know, why don't you come visit me? You must be with so-and-so, you know, guilt trips that have to do with your relationships with others or your job or your pets even right they they need all the supply they want you forever and ever to be theirs to toy with to dump on and to take supply from and then there's another type of toxic parent or maybe it all mixes together it really depends on the person where they're seriously in competition with their children so it could be about anything it could be about achievements it could be about appearances it could be about the affection and attention that child gets from other people it could be about the affection and attention that child gets from the other parent it could be about intelligence it could be about anything there's a competition level that comes up and when that happens they are constantly trying to shoot you down to build themselves up they will verbally attack you for success. They will verbally attack you for your appearance or they will state the opposite of what you actually are and try and get you to believe it because of course you believe it. That's your mom or dad, usually mom in this case, <laughs> right? Well, dads can do it too with their, yeah. And oftentimes this happens with same gendered uh, children to the, to the parent. Um, and this competition is so fierce that you can see the jealousy, you can hear it in the, in the parent's voice and you're thinking, what did I do? You're basically left walking on eggshells. You're left walking around, not knowing what's okay to say, what's not okay to say, fearful of any success you have, even not letting yourself succeed in life or not letting yourself do well or not letting yourself look your best or not, not achieving, not meeting your potential because of fear of what this other person, this toxic parent will do and how you will feel once they do it. You usually feel pretty bad about yourself or you feel pretty angry with them and you don't know how to get out of it. They're sabotaging your potential in order to keep themselves in the position of power and as the one who's better than everyone else. So these are just a few ways that narcissistic parents might manipulate you. If you have one, how might you might you might have lived through and what you might have experienced, none of it was okay. And we got to undo all that it's done that it's taught us all the programming that's gone on in order to meet our potential in order to feel okay about ourselves, in order to know who the heck you are. When you've been told you're basically a carbon copy of a narcissistic person, you aren't you're your own person and you get to separate from them, break the enmeshment, individuate, become your own person, discover who you are and start thriving in life. So if you want to talk more about this, if you have questions, experience any of this, if you did, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what happened and how you're handling it, which, what's going on for you. I'd love to hear it. And if you need anything from me, my name is Lise Colucci. I am easy to find in the main description of every video. There's information for just email, for coaching, for group coaching, hit subscribe if you haven't, hit the thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.